Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, my world has gone to shit. Well, I've got an email here from a viewer, and you guessed it, his world has gone to shit. He was working at a job that he absolutely pretty much fucking hated, and he got caught dozing off at his desk, and then he got the boot. So he's going through a really rough time. He's not making any money. Obviously, he's broke. He's unemployed. And he really thought that he'd be a better place at this point in his life. And so he basically writes in saying it's hard to not feel defeated and want to give up. And so he asked me my opinion on the situation and how he would approach things. But before we get into it, I got a quote that I wrote on this particular topic. And then we're going to go through his email. And the quote says, When your life goes to hell in a handbasket, you get fired from your job, your company downsizes, your lover dumps you unexpectedly, you have health challenges, etc. These are the ways that life gets our attention. It gets our attention in such a way as to force us to move in a new direction. Pain is life's way of telling us that what we are doing, how we are living, or who we are spending our time with no longer serves us and we need to make a change. When your life circumstances or relationships dissolve, you must look at it as a positive opportunity for change. What's happened has happened and couldn't have happened any other way. It's supposed to be this way. It needs to be this way. It must be this way. Only when you have a clean slate can you truly start over, create something new, and become a better, more improved, more successful version of yourself. Calamity, disaster, and destruction is a gift. See it as such and take action accordingly. I I had a friend of mine, she had a quote that she wrote on her Facebook many years ago. She said, when things, things fall apart so something better can fall together. And I've personally found that that is pretty true in life. That everything happens for a reason, even the things that are really bad really awful and seem to be coming out of left field. So let's go through his email. He says, good evening, Corey. I feel as though I've hit rock bottom. Today, a week after my 27th birthday, I got fired from a job I was unhappy at because I was caught nodding off at my desk for a couple of minutes. Well, I wouldn't say that you got fired just because you were sleeping. Obviously, because you weren't really into your job, you weren't really applying yourself and working really hard at it like you were passionate about. I remember seeing a uh, – and uh, it was called A Football Life. It's a documentary. It's on NFL Network and they did one a couple of years ago about the retired NFL coach Jimmy Johnson. And there was a guy in one of his meetings who really wasn't doing very well on the team. He was kind of like a, a third stringer and the guy had a lot of talent but he just wasn't really applying himself. And so they're in a meeting and this – I think it was during his first season as the coach of the Dallas Cowboys. This was back in the 1990s. And so this guy is here and they basically he, – he released that guy. They released him as a player and they cut him from the team. And that guy never played in the NFL again. Nobody else gave him a shot. And somebody asked him, well, what if Troy Aikman was doing that in one of the meetings? He said, I want to go, I would have gone over there and woke him up and said, hey, Troy, pay attention. We're having a meeting. Why is that? Well, because Troy Aikman was a quarterback and he's in – at this point, obviously, many years later, he's in the Hall of Fame because he was a great quarterback. And so the point that he was making is that the A players, the guys that really applied themselves and were consistently good on and off the field, he let them slide on things like that. But you got somebody who really isn't playing that well, is not really contributing a lot to the team or the organization and you see him dozing off, what happened? You get cut from the team. And that right then and there is – that's from the NFL. That's case in point of the best players in the world that play in the National Football League, American football. That's how the coaches approach it. If you're really great, yeah, you fuck up every now and then. They're going to let it slide. But if you are average and mediocre consistently and you get caught dozing off, you're more than likely going to get cut from the team because that's why you're not succeeding is because you're not applying yourself in the way you should be. And in this particular case, that's why you got fired from your job is because you didn't like what you're doing. And you can't look at it as, oh, poor me. I got fired from the job. You shouldn't have stayed at the job 
for the amount of time that you did. It's like once you recognize that the job sucked, you should have been looking to upgrade where you were working at. So you were basically doing just enough to not get fired and eventually you weren't even doing enough to not get fired because what happened? You got fired. He says, I have no job, no savings, I'm in debt and all I have are my skills. I was a customer service representative but I was unhappy. The workload was increasing, the policies had become much more strict and unfair and the morale among all of our employees was extremely low. Why would you want to work at some place like that? You gotta, if you're working a full-time job, you're going to be there at least 40 hours or more a week. Why would you want to spend your life working in a place that's literally sucking your life force and energy out of you? If you're working at a place like this and you're not happy, it's going to be very hard to be successful with women. Why? Because you don't like your life. You don't enjoy what you're doing. I, I'm doing a doing a video here and what do you hear? You hear somebody drilling in the background. It's like, what the fuck? All day long, but obviously right when I start shooting a video, this has to go off. That's just the way it is. That's, that's the way life is. Sometimes shit happens. As the old expression goes, when life gives you lemons, make some fucking lemonade. So you got to look at this as an opportunity. You're now free from that place where you really didn't want to be in the first place. So the universe has created space in your life. So instead of going out and getting another shitty customer service job that you're going to hate and probably eventually get fired from again, you need to be focused and applying yourself on doing something that's emotionally compelling. And I'm talking about something that on a scale of 1 to 10, it's a 10. 10 being you really love it and 1 obviously being you hate it. Because if you work at something you really love, you're going to apply yourself and you're going to become really great at it. Just like Troy Aikman, the NFL Hall of Fame quarterback. If he was caught dozing off in a meeting, the coach would have gone over there, who also was in the Hall of Fame, and said, hey, Troy, wake up, man. But if if you're not doing very well, you're not contributing very much to the team, and the coach sees that, he's going to be like, get the fuck out of here. You're not contributing to anything. You're sucking on, on the field, and you're sucking off the field. So there's no margin for error in that particular case. He says, we were all treated like slaves, and it hurt to be the subject of or to be subjected to such treatment. I would wake up and drag myself to work every day. I didn't have the strength anymore to look for the same kind of job expecting the same kind of results. Well, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll continue to get what you've always got. That's why it's so important that you use this as an opportunity to get a good job a job that you really want to work at, that you're excited to get up and go to in the morning because you're going to apply yourself a lot more. You're going to be more eager to learn in a job that you really love and you enjoy versus just going out and getting another shitty job that you don't like. He says, this was my second customer service job in the past four years with the same results. Lack of fair treatment and respect. Well, it's like I talk about this all the time. If you're not happy, you need to walk away and go do something else. I mean, obviously you want to line up a better job before you quit so you can pay your bills but your problem is that you recognize that this job sucked and what did you do to help yourself? Nothing. You stayed there hoping it would get better and it didn't and over time you put less and less energy into doing the job until it became very obvious and very noticeable to your employers and your bosses that you didn't want to be there and so when they caught you dozing off, that was pretty much the straw that broke the camel's back and then they fired you on the spot. After two frustrating jobs, I was tired, drained, and felt like I was burned out. This is exactly what I talk about. After two frustrating jobs, I was tired, drained, and felt like I was burned out. This is what happens when you work at something that you hate. It sucks the life force out of you. And most average people, they'll continue working at jobs like this their whole life because their belief system tells them that they don't deserve to be happy. They don't deserve to have what they really want. They don't deserve to work at a job that they make really good money at and that they love and enjoy. And so when you work at something like this and you force yourself to do it instead of doing anything to help yourself, it's like this, this tells me a lot about your belief system. It's like one of the things that Tony Robbins said, people will act consistently with who they view themselves to be, whether that view is accurate or not. And when you've worked at two different jobs over these years and you haven't really done anything to help yourself and better your situation, you are acting consistently with how you view yourself. In other words, you're acting like a guy 
who doesn't believe he deserves to do something he really loves and really enjoys. So you work at these shitty jobs because that matches your model of the world that you have of yourself. He says, I wanted so badly to get out of my current job but would come home too tired to lift a finger to consistently look for more work or a new environment. So that's the story you told. Oh, I'm too tired. Oh, I don't have time to work out. Oh, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to go out and practice talking to women if, if I don't have good skills. Those, the, the reason why people don't have the things they want in their lives is the story that they tell themselves. And this is why you never got another job because you kept telling yourself that you were too tired to do anything about it. And now that you've been fired, well, now you don't have a choice. Now you have to look for a job. So instead of going to get another job and having the same fucking pattern repeat itself over and over and over again, you got to say, this is insanity. I got to do something better. I got to do something that's more emotionally compelling because otherwise I'm going to end up in the same place. Doing what you've been doing is the kind of thing that will age you prematurely and cause you to drop dead at a heart attack at 50, 60 years old or even if, even if you make it to 40 years old. He says, as time passes on, I feel myself becoming more distant from the nature of who I truly am, which is a vibrant, creative individual. I'm a chill person, but I have an active, sociable, and upbeat personality. However, even writing this email feels tough mentally, experiencing mental lapses and finding it difficult to focus. I would get a good night's rest the night before, but I would come back to work tired, which I never understood. Well, that tells me that you're probably not eating very healthy as well. If you're not happy in your job and you're not making good money at it, you're not going to be spending money on good healthy foods. You're not going to be going to the gym. You're going to tend to drink more alcohol, more sugary drinks and things of that nature instead of more water and more alkaline green vegetables. On my website, on the homepage of my website, the fifth or sixth tab, tab down is called Optimum Health and I've got eight or ten different videos and articles that I've done on health and I highly recommend that you read those and start applying some of those principles in your diet so you can get in better shape, get in better health and you have more energy. He says, I had increased anxiety and was always eating whenever I felt anxious. So you're using food as a drug and you're probably eating crappy junk food which is a bunch of processed crap that doesn't really do anything to contribute to the overall health of your body. So how can you possibly expect to feel good? You're working at a job that sucks, you feel crappy, so you're eating food that sucks, which makes you feel worse, and the more sleep you get, it really doesn't seem to have an effect on how you feel. You're totally acting consistently with how you view yourself, which is obviously not a very high opinion of yourself. Because if you loved yourself and you had a high opinion and a high self-esteem, you'd work at a job that you loved. Why? Because you'd feel you deserved it and you wouldn't tolerate working at a job that sucked or working for people that are assholes, which you obviously tolerated for a long period of time. And if you love yourself and you're working at a job that you love and you're happy at, you're going to eat better food. You're going to want to work out. You're going to want to take care of yourself and you're going to want to make yourself not only healthy but also more attractive to members of the opposite sex. But you're basically treating your body like a garbage dump at this point, like you just don't fucking give a fuck. How can you possibly expect to have a long, healthy life when you're treating yourself and your body this way? You're going to burn it out, dude. Maybe like the the old uh, Def Leppard song, it's better to burn out than fade away. That's kind of how you're living. He says, emotionally, I feel like my heart is heavy, my body and my mind is heavy, and everything just feels heavy. My confidence is low, my morale is low, and I'm trying to stay focused and disciplined. Well, like Master Yoda said, try not. Either do or do not. There is no try. You either make something happen or you come up with excuses of why you shouldn't make it happen. Ironically, this is all coming at a time when I'm going through a transitional period mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. A process of self-improvement but now I feel like my world has gone to shit. Just when I felt like things were looking up, I slipped and allowed a job I hoped to walk out on kick me to the curb like I was nothing. And isn't this interesting, the point he brings up here? I slipped and allowed a job that I had hoped to walk out on kick me to the curb like I was nothing. When I talk to men and women who were in relationships that they knew needed to end but they really weren't doing anything about it and they just stayed in it and then all of a sudden the other person they don't really care that much about dumps them and kicks them to the curb. Now all of a sudden it's like, oh, I love them. They're the love of my life. I got to get them back. I get my ex back. How do I do that? What do I do? Oh my God, I need them. I want them. Oh no. 
And all it really is is their little piddly ego was like, hey, I got rejected here. I got dumped here. This is not what I was expecting to happen. How dare they? I, I got to get them back so then I can break up with them and I can feel better about the whole situation. And at the end of the day, it's like a lot of times when I talk to guys or girls and they tell me how shitty things were before the breakup and, and how – and when I listen to it, it's like it, it's obvious that the goals and values of the other person were not aligned with their own. And at some point, one or both people, when things had been good at one time, stopped putting their best foot forward. The only reason that people stop putting their best foot forward is either they're not happy themselves or they're not happy with the other person. But when they're the ones that got dumped, they don't look at those things. And I always point that out to people when I do phone sessions with somebody who's trying to get an ex back. And they tell me what things were like before the breakup had happened. He says, I can't believe how I allowed this to happen to me. You know what? Tough shit, dude. Get over it. The past is what it is. You can't do anything about it. And the more you go, oh, poor me, you're going to suffer. Why? Because you're hung up on what was. And we suffer as human beings when we want reality. In other words, when we want our present situation to be different than it is. Well, you got fired from your job. And the good news is is that you can do something about it. You can get yourself a better quality job because if you get a better quality job and you'll work harder at it, you'll make a little bit more money, you'll get more promotions, more opportunities will come your way. You take better care of yourself, you'll work out more, you'll eat healthier. And the healthier you eat and the more alkaline things you put in your body, the better you're going to feel. And the better you feel, it just spills over in every area of your life. On the side, I was a graphic designer and artist which always accrued a side income for me. It was, all, it was an escape and a getaway for me when my days were tough. However, the busier I was getting as a graphic designer, the more I realized how much energy and time I needed to dedicate to my side business, hoping to spin it into an apparel brand. At this point, I'm not trying to feel defeated, but I don't know, man. I feel so fucking low and defeated. I'm tired, broken, low. I've never been in the position before where I felt this way. Well, the good news is the only place to go from here is up, my friend. Because when you hit rock, rock bottom, that's when you get to a place when you say, I'm fucking done with this. I'm over being at this place. I'm over things sucking like this. I got this great business that I'd like to build someday. That's awesome. Build it on the side. But in the meantime, you need to get another job. Maybe it's a part-time job to make up for the income that you need in order to be able to pay your bills and have a comfortable standard of living. But there are literally thousands and thousands of jobs that you can get. So go get one that's appealing to you. If you want to work in the apparel industry, eventually with your own business, go see if there's somebody that you can go work for that's already doing what you want to do, something that's really compelling to you. And then that way you can at least work on a part-time job doing something you really enjoy and you like instead of hating what you're doing all the time. You got to spend your life doing something to earn a living it makes sense to go and work at something that you at least like and enjoy. I want to change my life for the better. I want to be happy, but the future looks uncertain. Well, like Dale Carnegie said, inaction breeds fear and doubt. Taking action breeds confidence and courage. And if you're in a fearful state and you're worried about your circumstances, the best thing that you can do is take action. Imperfect action is better than no action. All. As long as you start moving towards what you want and what feels good and what's compelling to you, you get busy and you get caught up taking action, moving towards the things that you want in life, you're not going to feel so bad anymore because you're busy. And when you're busy, you're taking action and you're doing things, you're going to get results. And when you're getting results, you can learn from your results, whether they're good or bad, intended or not. My chest feels like it wants to cry, but I can't even let out a tear. I'm struggling emotionally and mentally right now and it's uncomfortable. I currently live at home where I chip in for some of the bills and rent. I'm so ashamed I haven't even told my mom what happened. I don't know how to get over this emotionally, man. I feel like my world has gone to shit. I've been going to the gym. I'm taking care of my body. Well, if you're really taking care of your body, you wouldn't be eating when you felt crappy. So it's like mentally you're telling yourself that you're taking care of your body. But being healthy and being in shape, 90, 95% of it really is the food that you put in your mouth. He says, I'm going out, I'm participating in activities to make myself better, but now I feel paralyzed. I guess it's because of uncertainty and the future. Well, the real reason you feel paralyzed is because you're not really doing anything to help yourself. You got fired and you're basically sitting with your thumb up your butt. And so the only way your life is going to get better is if you start taking action. Like I said a moment ago, imperfect action is better 
than no action at all. Make a list of all the things that you really love and enjoy in life, things that you have a passion for. Obviously, you said you want to get into the apparel industry. Go see if there's a part-time job in the apparel industry. And any job that you take, whether it's a part-time job or a full-time job, make sure that what you're actually going to be doing there matches the things that you love and enjoy doing. Why? Because you'll work harder at it. It will be more enjoyable to you. And just like I was talking about earlier in the video, when you're working at something that you love and you enjoy, you're going to be happier, you're going to smile more, you're going to feel more peaceful, you're going to feel more relaxed and that in and of itself is going to make you feel better because when you're angry and you're stressed out and you're fearful all the time, you're literally pumping your body full of acid and toxins because our bodies are a reflection of our thoughts that we have about ourselves. That's definitely something to think about. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session, and you can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.